Hey guys, it's Mathle here once again, and as I already made a few of the videos about this character basically covering all bosses and content and all that sort of stuff, I did want to still do a guide or, you know, sort of a walkthrough on how to build something like this, a Frostblades Pathfinder CI, but I wanted to start off with just a quick map to show you the gameplay of what it looks like to actually map with this character, because this is primarily a mapping character. It's not really going to be amazing for the endgame boss fights, though it can be. It's not, you know, the best ever boss fight build, so uh, you're better off just mapping with this and, you know, getting some good levels in, having fun with Frostblades, which is what I've been doing. So I wanted to start off with just a quick map. Uh, it's got Enfeeble, Goatman, and it's a plateau, so it should give you a good indication of what it looks like to uh, map with a character like this, how fast it is, how slow it is, all that sort of things. So, um, First of all, you don't have to use Blood Rage like I'm doing right now. Blood Rage can be a bit uncomfortable because it degens you 4% per second, but when you have good enough uh, clear speed like I currently have, good enough attack speed, movement speed, and uh, leech and all that, then um, Blood Rage seems to be, for the most part, worth it most of the time, and uh, I like using it because it gives you a good chunk of extra attack speed and uh, damage through the frenzies as well. And you can see the um, clear speed pretty solid here interesting uh pretty damn solid and the playstyle is really nice so shield charge around everywhere boss fight uh we'll just throw a couple of traps drop our thrust bomb and try and kill him there we go so that's all there is to that but more or less yeah just dash around get your frost blades in it's pretty fast it's probably one of the fastest characters I've played in recent memory. Um, maybe Voltaxic Sparkle was a bit faster, but um, for the most part, you know, even with Enfeeble and all this sort of shit, it ends up being really fast and really safe too, because um, as I've mentioned before, the uh, freeze action is what makes this sort of build really safe. So this is just a bit of chain example as well. thought I'd give you guys a test, a oh, bit of a demo, because um, yeah, faster attacks is what I use most of the time, but chain makes you clear a bit faster uh, in certain maps. So I still just pick and choose which one I use whenever I want to, as I want to, but um, that's up to you too. And this is what happens when you don't have um, faster attacks in and you're using chain. It does get a bit slower on the clear speed with the single targets. In any case, I was going to mention um, the reason we only have like 7 or 8k ES, and for the most part, that's how much I had up until about... Well, from about level 80 onwards, uh, is because you just don't need that much. As you can see, we are defensive, we are tanky, we freeze everything. I almost never take damage on this character, almost never die. It's pretty good, um, safe mapping experience, something like 90 mil in an hour at level 91 with a plateau. So that is basically what the gameplay of the build looks like in its full end game. Uh, you're a Pathfinder, you have all your flasks, you piano them, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You do quite a lot of shield charging, and then you right click um, using shift almost always, and, uh, you know, Frostblades auto targets, and uh, goes ham. So straight into the guide, I suppose. Uh, most of the info is on the left hand side here. It's a little bit outdated right now because we are level 91. Hold on. Level 91 and um, defenses, I'm not fully capped on anything because I have my Wise Oak up like 100% of the time as well as Taste of Hate, so I didn't bother fully capping my resist. You can if you want to though, it shouldn't be too hard. And um, I will go over the flasks right now I suppose. So Wise Oak with all the Pathfinder nodes, with the way it works, it um, focuses on your highest resist. With both of my flasks up, my highest resist is 243 for cold. So you can see we gain um, up to 30 by going up to 109. So 30% extra penetration just by using this flask as a pathfinder is pretty damn strong. And um, likewise, it gives you 10% damage reduction, which will go up to 15% as a pathfinder for your lowest resist, which um, in our situation would be fire. So we have an extra fire resist um, mod there. Besides that, running a diamond flask, which is just extra crit, a uh, silver flask, which has a stun and block recovery mod, uh, with Pathfinder especially. This is, for the most part, how I get stun and block recovery in the build. I don't have any stun immunity, and um, this is just what I've been using. It's more or less a budget option, and I don't really need any other flasks, so this is what I went with. 
And lastly, and Zero's Promise gives you quite a lot of damage as well as a, a good chunk of leech. You can see with the flask up, 50k extra. Now some of that is just because of Pathfinder um, nodes like the attack speed here and the early damage here, but still you do gain like quite a large amount of extra chaos damage, so it's fairly worth using in my opinion. So that more or less takes care of the Pathfinder aspect of it. Um, you don't have to be a Pathfinder. I think you can play this as a Raider, probably an Assassin as well, uh, but Pathfinder gives gives us 10% damage pen here, really good flask sustain with that um, extra elemental status ailment mod, uh, some attack speed, movement speed, some you know flask sustain there, and of course immunity to all status ailments and some additional damage. So it's pretty competitive with Raider, and uh, Raider could definitely be the right answer, just you'll have to take a few more frenzy charges. As far as the passive tree goes, we do try and avoid uh, taking projectile damage because as I mentioned, it only scales the second half of our damage, and we wanna try and get as much general damage as possible, of which there is plenty to do. If there wasn't enough damage to grab, then projectile damage would be pretty good, and this one one node here in particular should be all right if you have uh, additional points for it. I really didn't feel like I did. Otherwise, yeah, cold damage, some penetration, some elemental damage, uh, claw nodes, physical damage since it all gets converted, and crit multi, as well as some flask nodes. We really don't have much energy shield on the tree at the moment because um, we don't need too much, and a lot of it's just coming from gear. So 500 ES there, 300 there, uh, almost 200, about 200. Barely any on jewelry, about 100 there, and a skin of the loyal for 100% global defense. Now, you probably need to tailor your tree to your own gear. If you need more ES nodes, take more ES nodes, but currently, this is all I need, and uh, it's all I've taken. As far as um, some of the aura nodes here, to run my current aura setup, you do need all of this and all of this, as well as a level three enlighten um, right here. So discipline, Hatred and a level 3 Enlighten, and then you can get a Herald of Ice as well. To fit all three of these in, you do need all of that reservation. Without that, then, um, I don't know, you might have to drop one of these, but it feels pretty damn bad. So I've been trying as hard as I can to fit all three in. I didn't run Discipline for a very long time, because, like I said, don't really need that much ES. And I did a lot of leveling with only about 5k ES, 4k ES. It was fine, but um, obviously you don't have to do that could drop Herald of Ice, but currently that's where we get our power charge on, or our, you know, power charges. Curse on hit, Assassin's Mark, Herald of Ice, and also Orb of Storms for a manual um, sort of curse, but uh, for the most part that is autopilot cursing. But uh, that'll basically take care of the passive tree. It's not the easiest leveling in the world because, you know, you do not really get that much damage early on. You have to go for this early on. Um, probably level a Spectra Throw or Frost Blades. Go straight to the Claw damage as soon as possible. But uh, it's kind of up to you guys. The Jewels, you do run two Fight for Survivals. Um, you don't need to take 40 Dexterity in the node area. You just need 40 Dexterity around the area unallocated. So over here we only have 30. That doesn't matter. It still works because there's 40 in total around the area. Um, lots of penetration and some good prod speed. Besides that, my actual jewel sockets, you try and go for physical damage, crit multi, maybe some resists, uh, and maybe some attack speed. So something like this is absolutely perfect. Crit multi, crit multi, cold damage, attack speed, can get physical damage. Jewels are pretty easy to come by for this build and they're not too expensive. And of course, most of our leech and mana leech comes from Soul Raker, so that's pretty easy, nice and autopilot. Get a bit of extra leech over here on its series promise, but uh, for the most part, it's Soul Raker over here doing all of the heavy lifting. Lastly, I'll go over gear and um, links, I suppose. So you can see here, my damage is something like 90K unbuffed at the moment, and that is with a cold penetration gem. So before I was using added cold and my tooltip was a lot higher, but uh, nowadays running cold penetration, because it should, in theory, be more damage, and our tooltip gets a bit lower. If you're running chain, of course, over faster attacks, quite a lot of the time, then you'll have a much less initial tooltip, but sub in faster attacks whenever you need to. So the links are on the left-hand side here, but uh, the most important ones, you go frost blades, uh, weapon early damage into multi-strike, then probably crit strikes at this stage, you really do want that, then cold pen, and then faster attacks. So a six link goes a long way. I initially just went with a skin of the loyal because it has really you know cheap colors, or had really cheap colors, and some good defenses. 
And um, yeah, and it was a six link. The plus socket to gems barely does anything for fizz builds or attack builds in general. So um, don't worry too much about that. If you can get a different six link, get a different six link and it's series splendor should be pretty good too. The claw, about 300 PDPS. Um, you're looking for crit, attack speed, fizz damage. Any cold damage is a good bonus. Crit multi is a good bonus. And then all the um, armor pieces, you're just looking for as much energy shield as possible. Chaos spam this guy pretty damn easily, but um, don't expect to get something similar. 400 plus, 450 plus, shouldn't cost too much. And um, yeah, that's around what you're looking for, for a shield. I uh, went with a 40% increased Frostblade damage enchant to start with, and then Chaos spammed. 360 isn't that amazing, but it's a good start. Go for something like 350 plus on a hubris. Uh, gloves, I'd say 150 plus energy shield, try and get attack speed, if you can get accuracy as well, and a resist, that's great. The uh, Brine Rot Whalers, a good roll on these, goes a pretty damn long way, 200 energy shield, good movement speed, uh, physical damage, and I got an 80% chance to avoid being stunned if you've killed recently enchant on them, which, you know, helps a lot with the Silver Flask as well, because uh, this, you know, for the most part, just gives you really good recovery, but you can get stunned, whereas this helps you just avoid being stunned a lot of the time. Uh, grab a Crystal Belt, slam a few Chaos or Essences on it. This is what I got with some Hatred Essences, I believe. Try and get Wed. Uh, you need Strength somewhere, so you got some Strength there, but we've also got some Strength there. As far as the Amulet goes, you want some Accuracy, if you can get it. Uh, weapon Elemental Damage and Crit Multi. And then whatever else you can on an Amulet. Physical Damage, but it's not too important. Cold Damage as well, but not too important. And lastly, I grabbed two opal rings. Uh, this one I crafted with a Scorn Essence. It's pretty decent, but uh, nothing too outstanding. This one I bought for 2x, and it's about as good as it can possibly get. So it was crafted with a uh, Cold Essence, and then also Hit Wed, so it's got something like almost 100% elemental damage. This is your ideal ring, and that's what you're looking for. Uh, that's roughly all the gear, I believe. The Link setup, like I mentioned, Discipline, Hatred, and Enlighten uh, with an Ancestral Protector. Like I said, you're only putting that guy down every now and again for some attack speed gains. He will die immediately. Your uh, Shield Charge setup is Shield Charge, Fortify, and Faster Attacks, and that makes you move pretty fast. It's better than um, Whirling Blades when you have all your stuff up because it scales really nicely off of move speed, move speed and attack speed. And your Vile setup is Vile Haste, Vile Lightning Trap, Frost Bomb, and Increased Duration. Drop your Frost Bomb under pretty much anything you want to kill um, that's going to be a bit tougher for that minus cold penetration or minus cold resist. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it, I believe. Ice Golem, Blood Rage. Like I said, use Blood Rage whenever you feel you need it, but uh, don't use it if you really don't like it. And the Curse on Hit setup, that's about all there is to that. Bandits are on the left-hand side of the screen. We hit about 54 uh, unbuffed crit, something like 70 crit with power charges. And of course, Diamond Flask gets us a lot higher. When doing it Ziri or certain fights where you don't want multi-strike, try and put in uh, melee physical, and that gives you a much nicer tooltip. Um, or not nicer tooltip, but still, you know, maintains a good tooltip without the multi-strike, because sometimes multi-strike gets you in trouble doing whatever the hell it wants, rather than what you want it to do. So that's it for the Frostblade character, guys. It was pretty damn fun. Uh, I'd recommend trying it if you got the currency or the uh, willpower to play it. It's not going to be great for bosses in the end game, but it can do most, and it's very fun for mapping as a character, as a skill. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video, hope you enjoyed the character, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.